Hello and welcome back to Sharks Happen. On today's episode, we're going to go over a couple of surfers, uh, a couple of spear fishermen, and we're going to go over somebody swimming to retrieve a fish all um, being attacked. We'll finish out the show with something you don't hear every day. And I hope you stick around. It's going to be a great show. Okay, we'll start out our show. We're going to head over to Sand Strand Beach, or Sand Beach, which is over in Western Cape Province, South Africa. And the date on this attack is July 6th of 2012. Jock Mostart, he is 29 years old and he is out doing some afternoon surfing. Uh, it's about 4.30 in the afternoon, he's already been surfing for a while and he's about to get out of the water. He says he's about 15 meters from shore, so a good 40, 50 feet from shore. He doesn't, know, doesn't say the depth of the water. 4.30 and he is laying on his board, obviously waiting on a wave, and he says that he saw something swim by him. And at first he thought it was a dolphin, but he soon realized it was a problem. He gets hit in his side hard shortly after that. And he said it was like a dog because of the way it shook when it grabbed him. So the shark swam, sounds like almost underneath his board by him. And by the time he realized it wasn't a dolphin, he was already being bitten. And it bit him in the, in the hip he got the hip all the way down to the knee. They said it was a 25 centimeter long, so a good 10, 11 inch long gash that was a couple inches wide, so about five centimeters wide or eight centimeters wide, they had said. So a very big gash all the way along his leg that was caused by this. It tore tendons, it tore up nerves in this bite. And it was a real quick one where he was grabbed, he was shaken, the shark let him go and just went on his way. He was able to get in and get help. He lost a ton of blood. They were able to save him, uh, repair the leg. Uh, I'm not sure how much he made it back as far as full use of his leg after it got nerves and tendons in the, in the hip area and the leg area. Um, haven't seen an update on after his rehabilitation. So um, a very lucky um, attack on a, on a surfer that actually, you know, one of those scary ones where you see it first go by and, and then by the time you figure out it's not a dolphin, it's biting on you. So this will go down as an attack, not an attempt to predate. They say this is about a four to four and a half meter great white uh, shark, not great white shark, four to four and a half meter. So you're talking 14, 15 foot shark. If it's a 15 foot shark, that leaves it a, a pretty much just a great white or a tiger. If it's 14 foot shark, you have a bull shark that could be there too. So uh, one of the three, I would say, uh, definitely got a hold of him. Most likely a great white in my opinion, but you know, there hasn't been any proof of that and with the shaking that's where you get that rip open you know when it bites in you're going to have the teeth marks you're going to have those oh wrong wrong backdrop you're going to have those teeth that are going to do the slicing in you but once they shake they rip that whole section open the teeth just end up being like a knife so it's always bad when a, when a shark goes ahead and shakes like that and Jock Mostert 29 survives we will move on Okay, now we're going to head over to Kona, Hawaii, and the date on this attack is April 11th of 2009. Paolo Dominici, he is 49 years old, and he and a friend had gone out to do some spearfishing. At 6.45, they enter the water, they split up the two of them when they're in the water. They're in relatively shallow water. They're not very far from shore as they left from shore, it, it sounds like, and Paulo disappears. His buddy returns to shore three hours later. So they're in the water spearfishing for three hours. His buddy gets out of the water. And then about an hour after he gets out of the water, searching probably if Paulo had left the water and went home, not finding him, they report it to authorities. Authorities do a search. They find some of his gear, some of Paulo's gear, including his mask, his spear gun, and other items. They also say that they find uh, the condition of them say that 
they could have been a boat accident. Again, they're in relatively shallow water, so you know, a boating accident, a possibility, but I don't think it's very likely in this case because where's the body in that case? Um, they never do find Paulo. They, they suspend the search two days later on Monday, uh, maybe a day and a half later, but they suspend the search barring any other evidence popping up. They found the damaged gear. And they never found a thing Apollo. And they say that it could be a boating accident, but they're not ruling out a shark attack. And there's no real way to tell. I would say it's most likely the shark that did it, not a boat. So I'm gonna put this down as an attack, a predation. Um, we're not gonna put the type of shark, but it's most likely the tiger shark, a large tiger shark. And you know, it's a fatality and a predation. So that's how that's gonna go down for Paolo. And unless we hear anything different, case is closed on that one. Real quick, we're gonna head on over to Tupacele Village, which is over in Papua New Guinea. And the date on this attack is February 19th of 1960. Daus Huhunu, he is 26 years old and he was out in the water. There aren't any details, but he was attacked by a shark. They said that he had a uh, bad lower leg injury and that it was fatal. And that's all we know about Daos, that he went into the water, was attacked by a shark, his leg was torn up pretty bad and it was fatal for him. Uh, most likely an artery uh, clipped in there and lost too much blood, I would think. Hard to tell without knowing, it's 1960. This might have been in the rash of the um, cluster attack we covered down there that included the uh, nine-month-old Teresa Maneri. So that might be in that whole stretch of attacks back in 1960 that those had happened. But that's the story of Daos. Uh, attack, not an attempt to predate that we know of, a fatality. We don't know what type of shark and we don't even know the circumstances of what he was doing when he was attacked. Okay, now we're going to head over to the Fakarava Atoll which is in the Tuamotu Islands, and that is French Polynesia. The date, April 10th of 2013. Nick Eitel, he is 53 years old. He is out doing some kiteboarding. Um, it's about noon, and he's pretty close to shore. He's only 150 feet from shore, so about 50 meters from shore. And he's in 80 feet deep water, pretty deep for just off of shore. And he's just about done with his kites, kiteboarding. He said that the wind had died down, so he took his kite and laid it on his head, and it sounds like he sat down on his board. So he says he's sitting in the water. It just sounds like just like with a surfboard, when you sit on it near the back, it probably sits down into the water, the front sits up out of the water, so he's sitting in the water. He says no sooner did he hit the water, as far as sitting down, than he was hit from behind. A shark came up from behind and really quick smacked him in the back, hitting him with his, with, his, with his teeth, getting him in the hip, in the buttocks, in the lower back, and very shallow uh, teeth marks on there. It also got his board. Um, the back of the board had some minor damage to it, and he never did see the shark. It didn't do any shaking. It wasn't a long thing. It was hit and gone. There was a captain that went ahead and treated his wounds and that's all he needed. He did not even need to go in to get these wounds sutured. He just needed bandages and probably staunch some bleeding. Uh, he goes ahead and survives. So the shark um, doesn't sound like it even clamped down on him. It just kind of hit him open mouth when it hit the board, hit him and it just went on its way. So he doesn't even need to go to the hospital for his wounds. Like he said, he thought it was a smaller shark. Uh, black tip reef shark. They go about eight feet, I think, when they get maybe a little bit bigger than that, maybe about 10 feet, but a real skinny shark with not a huge mouth, so nothing that it's going to be able to do there. But to go ahead and hit him with its open mouth and just go on the way, that's the best case scenario because it doesn't tear any flesh. He didn't even need to get his wounds taken care of. So an attack, not an attempt to predate. We don't know what kind of shark probably fits into our, our stats as far as size, which we're going to put it in there. As it seems to have gotten its whole mouth around that back of the board, and the back of the board's a good five inches wide. It's not a huge wide board. It's, it's more like a surfboard or ski than a surfboard type thing. It's very, very 
uh, skinny as far as the board goes and it got its whole mouth on there so it was probably a decent sized shark and we'll put it down as an attack not an attempt to predate don't know what kind of shark but probably one of those reef sharks you know we're gonna head out to just north of Key West which is in Florida the date on this attack is July 29th of 2020 Justin Stuller he is 38 years old he and his wife and some friends had gone out um, to vacation down in the Keys and they went out on a boat and they're diving down into the water enjoying themselves and Justin sees right around 1 o'clock in the afternoon doesn't say how far they are from shore but they're out on a boat he sees that there's a wounded hogfish down in some rocks and he swims down to check on this hogfish and he gets down there and grabs it and brings it up checks it it sounds like because he knows that it's too short too shy of the limit so you can't keep it it's not big enough so he takes and he's going to put that fish back down in the rocks keeping it away from his family and friends that are in the water he goes down there and puts that fish back in those rocks that he got it out of and he starts coming to the surface and on his way to the surface he says he's just blasted out of the blue a shark comes up and bites him in the leg and kind of spins him a little bit in the water uh, doesn't do any thrashing that he speaks of and just goes on its way so he goes in he's got a bite to the back of his lower leg uh, teeth marks in the back and teeth marks in the front of the lower leg and two arcs so it got him in the leg down by the knee and he gets himself stitched up he didn't get any arteries or tendons from the attack and he ends up surviving it gets fixed up and he's out of the hospital the next day and back out with his family and friends but this time as the boat operator and his wife says that he was Mr. Grumpy that day because <laughs> he can't enjoy the water because he got bit by a shark now the shark turns out to be a six to eight foot lemon shark um, we've gone over lemon shark attacks before they're pretty much the same thing bite and see ya, just like a reef shark would normally do to you not a real dangerous type shark like a bull a, a, you know oceanic white tip your bronze whaler great white or tiger it's more like a docile shark that isn't going to try to eat you unless you're out there like stuck out there like in open water when you're forgotten about but I think those are bronze whalers underneath her when they show all those below her I'll have to watch that movie again see what kind of sharks those were down there when she finally takes her her vest off and sinks herself but uh, good news here for Justin he ends up surviving it without much damage as far as the shark attack goes and was back out in the water the next day attack not an attempt to predate 68 foot lemon shark okay now we're going to head over to Sandspit Beach that is located in California and the date on this attack December 28th of 2014 Kevin Swanson 50 years old he is out and he is doing some surfing uh, it's about 11:30 in the morning and he is laying on his board he's got friends in the water with him and his one friend that was about 10 feet away from him says that it was the most shocking thing he's seen now they don't say how far from shore and the depth but he says that the shark came up from the depths and curled itself up lifting its head out of the water just grabbing onto his buddy and his board and pulling him under the water I think it only pulled him under the water and bit his board at the same time but it pulled his buddy straight out of the water and and he said how silent the whole thing was so he must have been looking over at his friend and saw the dark shape come up and the shark come up and grab him by the hip he was bitten on the hip and pulled down into the water he says it was just a couple seconds and Kevin had bounced to the surface screaming shark shark attack and jumped on his board and paddled his way in um, everybody ends up getting out of the water safely he ends up with a wound to his hip that needs to be dealt with it doesn't say that he got any tendons or nerves and he survives the attack Kevin does it was he didn't mention anything about shaking or anything the shark did when he was underwater it seems it took him underwater and just released him and went on its way they think this was an 8 to 10 foot great white shark possibly the other odd thing about this attack is the silence of them and that's the scary thing to me about these sharks I mean when you're being attacked you don't know they're there till they hit you you don't hear nothing till they hit you unless you're on the surface you're not going to hear anything 
Um, if you're in the water with them, they're not going to be doing any thrashing or anything like that. They may be swimming very fast at you, but you're not going to be able to hear that, I don't think. Um, it's a matter of a silent, huge bus being on you without you even knowing it. And this one came up from underneath, and the guy saw it just grab him and take him under. Silent. Not splashing, nothing. Just came up, grabbed him, took his friend under. Could you imagine not seeing it happen and you look over and your buddy's not there? <laughs> you don't know where he's at. He's under the water with the shark. So that's the attack on Justin Stuller. Attack, not an attempt to predate, and we'll move on. Okay, now to finish off the show, we're going to hop on over to Nomia, which is New Caledonia. The date is in 1904. Charlie Smith. He is a young man, and three of the young men were out in a, it look, if the picture is right, it looks like a fishing wharf with fishing boats everywhere. And they're out in the water, and they're doing some swimming. Charlie and his two friends. Charlie's grabbed and taken under the water by a large shark. They search the water, and they can't find him. They report he's missing. A search is launched. They never do find Charlie. Uh, he, he ends up grabbed by a large shark, and it sounds like one of the kids saw, actually saw the shark. And that was the last they saw Charlie. Usually, you know, these attacks, you, you, you see the victim at least once or twice during the attacks. Um, kind of unusual for them to just disappear and never pop back up to the surface. Um, even in the prolonged attacks, the people are usually up on the surface for quite some time during the attack. So this is a crazy one for it to just grab him and just take him away. Sounds like what you know, Great White wants to do when they kind of swim up along a diver and grab onto him and just slowly start swimming away with him like the one diver that thought that he was tangled up in kelp. Turned and looked and a 15 foot Great White Shark was swimming off with his leg. That sounds like what happened here. Just grabbed him and took him away. Um, I think when they do that, it's just a deliberate deal, kind of like with uh, Heather Boswell. Nice, slow, deliberate. Doesn't need to be a crazy movement to get them out of there to take people away. A big shark can take you away real easily. And it can be done silently, like that last story where the person was pulled off the board without any noise. Um, these sharks are incredibly silent when they're in that water and the only thing you're hearing when you're hearing an attack is splashing of water or crunching of bones if it's on you. I mean that's what the people that say they hear things during the attack. Um, so another sad attack on Charlie Smith just to be out having fun with your buddies and that's it. That's, that's what keeps me out of salt water. <laughs> keeps me away from waters where there's alligators, where there's anything like that. That's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll be back in a couple more days. I'm going to have a, a multiple victim attack episode. I have um, another single attack episode that's coming up, Omar Conger, which is um, an attack that I first realized, So, however far that is in, that's when I realized these sharks most of the time are not out to feed. These great whites, they're doing something different. And that's when I figured that with the surfboards and this other thing, it's more like what they did to Omar Conger than what it is when they go ahead and eat somebody. So I'll have Omar Conger's episode out next week. I'll have another full episode out, out next week. I'm heading down to Georgia for the next four or five days on Monday. So uh, I have a couple of episodes filmed. So every couple of days, you'll get something for the next couple of weeks. And until then, if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of these sharks than they are of you.